our faith. I didn't know this was the direction we were going today. I do know this, that God desires more than anything else for us to live by faith. For us to live by what we see according to his word, not according to see according to our eyes. I know that as I was preparing in this sermon, I was using the passage of scripture, and I'm not going to read all of it now, I was using the passage of scripture in John where they were kind of huddled in a mass wondering what next. Jesus appears to them. And on the evening of the first day of the week, as the disciples were together, they were, the doors were locked, they were in fear of the Jews. Jesus couldn't stood among them. We all struggle with our doubts and our fears. We all struggle with that. And then one of the greatest things that God is calling us to is a place of faith. And the Lord has been asking me a question, because I'm struggling as a pastor of seeing this church grow, seeing us reach people. I'm just, this is gut level honest with you. I want to see us reach people. We are, and I guess and it comes from me, I'm, I'm crying out saying, God, would we get our hearts broken again for the souls of men and women? I don't know if my heart's broken enough. I'm satisfied with seeing all of y'all in heaven, but am I not, my dissatisfaction level needs to go up a little bit more. I need to believe God for a greater intensity to see souls and people come to the saving knowledge of Jesus and then those that are disenfranchised. I told the session a few weeks ago, I mean, a session meeting it. I get out here, and I'm in the community, and I talk to people, and I, I've got so many people promise, I, hey, Pastor Don, I'm coming to church there. I'm coming, I'm coming. And I finally get to where I say, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I really don't. I say, I'll see it. I'll believe it when I see it. What we need is that awakening of a revival of hearts starting in us, that we believe God can do even greater measure than what we even thought. First day of the week, they gathered together. They're, they're huddled in masses even after Jesus has been raised from the dead, and they still haven't figured out everything that's going on with this, and it said they were in great fear. One of the, the most damaging things to our faith is that of fear. We all deal with fear. Every one of us do. We deal with fear of our kids, what's going to happen to them, fear of our grandkids, fear of our life. We all deal with fear, and everything that fear comes back to is that of death. Every tentacle that fear sends out as a tentacle goes back to death. <clears throat> there are people sitting here right now, I can tell you, that are not afraid to die. They have no qualms about that whatsoever. But we do have fears still, and those fears go back to that place. Every one of the disciples had their fears. They were dealing with, what if Jesus is not going to stay with us or come back or Maybe everything he said, what we, we've seen the empty tomb. We've seen him being risen from the dead. But what if it's not exactly what he said? Faith is always having confidence in something that's far greater than what we can imagine. Faith is that place where we trust more than we trust ourselves. Faith is that place where we aren't trusting no longer in a person or a thing, but we're trusting in the omnipotent, omniscient God who sees everything. And belief is that place where we're putting our trust in something greater than us, and we believe that that proof is in the pudding. Now, as a pastor, I can tell you, I cry out, and I say, God, and, 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 I've, and I can be honest with you, at 56 years old, I'm, I'm not looking for proof or value. When I was younger, it was the validation that the ministry, what I was doing is great, when you see the numbers growing and stuff. Folks, the only reason I'm concerned with numbers is because I'm not concerned enough with souls. Bottom line, I love you guys. I really do. I love you as a church. I love every one of you as the flock of this church that I have the opportunity with other pastors here to pastor. I love that. But what I don't like in the American church or even in what I see in myself at times is the passion to see others come to the saving knowledge. I look and I say, God, would we cry out for more? Where is our faith? I, 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 the Lord always lets me see that picture that's hanging over in the Family Life Center. And we believe that God could bring this building out of the ground debt-free, and we'd be sitting in it today debt-free. And it is an amazing testimony of what God can do. But I'm asking you that for, number one, expand your faith that you believe God, and this is what I'm crying out for me, 
that we believe God can do exceedingly above all we can ask or imagine. There are people out there that do not know Jesus Christ. There are people that you know that have walked away from the fellowship and the love of Christ, that it's going to take a message of hope and, and produce that faith again within them. Doubt is one of those things that breeds out of fear. And we can doubt a lot of things. One thing we cannot doubt is that God truly wants to see people come to this saving knowledge of Christ. My heart's cry for this church is that we become that saving station again, that salvation station that God is calling us. And by faith that we can see that, just as we saw this building coming out of the ground, that we can see God not just doing his little bit of work here and there, but we're allowing him to have control of our lives. And then we'll see what the fire that God can do in that. When the disciples said they were in this locked room, it said this. It said, Jesus came and stood among them in the locked room. Didn't say he opened the door. Didn't say he, he stood supernaturally among them. And he said, he told them because they all were freaked out. And Jesus looked at them and says, peace be with you. Peace was with them because Jesus was with them. He showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. I have equated this to the times that I've read. I'm a history buff. I love history. I read the times of past in the church. And when I was praying a while ago, it's been over 100 years since we've seen a nationwide revival. We've seen out sparkings of revival. It's been over 1906 with Azusa Street Revival. It was the birth of modern-day Pentecostalism and things that, that we can see that it poured out from Azusa Street in California went all the way across the United States. We have not seen one like that since 1906. We've seen smatterings and portions of Pensacola and Brownsville. But it's because Jesus showed up in a certain place <clears throat> without any kind of reservations, and people started believing, saying, God, could you do something here? When Jesus shows up, he lets you see, he lets you feel, he lets you know. He let him see his hands aside. You can see this. Our faith is based on a God who is living so we can see his work. I want to see the living God moving again across this nation. Start with us, God. What I'm asking you to do as a church is let's cry out. Would you cry out and say, God, do in me whatever it is you need to do so we can see this revival. I've always been a revivalistic preacher. Sometimes I fall, and this is true confessions, I fall in the pastoral way. I preach to you pastorally, which is fine. But I want to see the revivalistic fires again. I'm trying to be obedient to the Holy Spirit and listen to what he has to say because there are some of us that we live our lives fully as skeptics of what God can do because we have never seen it. Now, we can condemn a little bit later in this passage right here. You can condemn Thomas all you want because they can't, he wasn't there with them. And he says, not unless I can see his hands and feel his side will I believe. There's going to take, there's two different cases here. Those who have experienced Jesus, if you've experienced Jesus, you could be a catalyst for this kind of movement of what God wants to do in this nation again. It takes those who've experienced Jesus. I wish I could be like these guys that I've seen that, that hear God audibly. I'm not that kind of guy. I get impressions. I can see things certain ways. I've had people that have seen Jesus. Some of the Muslims that have come to faith in Jesus Christ, they have seen Jesus with their eyes. I've not done that. But I have sensed his presence and I have experienced his goodness through faith. And I believe he truly wants those who believe him to be used in these last days. If you don't hear all the saber rattling that's going on around the world, you understand this. Wars and rumors of war are intensifying. God wants to pour out his spirit. There will be a great falling away of the church, but in the meantime, we're praying that there will be a great gathering in of what God wants to do. It's going to take you, first and foremost, to believe that Jesus has risen from the dead. You must experience. The great thing about Christianity is it's an experiential religion. It's not just head knowledge. It's not just head knowledge. We gain head knowledge so it gains and it lands into our heart so it creates an atmosphere that we believe God can still do what he says he can do. They heard that Jesus was risen from the dead, but it wasn't until he stood in his presence and said, look, see, 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 see what you can see. 
You say, well, I've got to believe before I can see that is true. Every one of us, faith is an integral, critical part of our lives. What do you believe in these days? Do you believe that God truly wants to pour out His Spirit? We all got hold of a vision that He could build this place right here debt-free. I'm asking you to get hold of a vision that He wants every seat in here filled by the power of His Holy Spirit. Our efforts will get worn out, we'll get tired, but by the power of His Holy Spirit, He wants people to come to that place of knowing Him to know him folks we're going to spend eternity together that's an awesome awesome privilege that christ has given us in the meantime our job is to be led by the power of the holy spirit when i ask people to come for refreshing if you're not being led by the holy spirit the, the thing that you need is that new fresh encounter the disciples walked three years with jesus but it wasn't until this fresh encounter because Jesus goes on and says, receive this Holy Spirit. And Jesus says, peace be with you. As with the Father sent me, I'm sending you. And he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. It takes us living by faith that Jesus Christ can and do what he said he's going to do because he is the living word of God. That's where our faith is created. But our belief is nurtured in the power of the Holy Spirit and in obedience to the words of Christ. He's calling us. He's calling us to a place of intimacy with Him. He's calling us to a place that we walk by faith, that all fears are being cast out. We can be afraid of what somebody's going to think about us or what somebody's going to say about us. I was listening to a fellow this past week, and he was telling me about a testimony of a guy that was so rough. He said that nobody really wanted to talk to him. And finally, he said God convicted him so badly that he went to him and he told him, he said, look, so-and-so, you may not want to hear this, but I've got to say it. It was that impression of the Holy Spirit that was so powerful. He said, you have never wanted anything to do with God all of your life. You've cursed people that would even try to bring him to you. But he says, you need God. You are on your deathbed, and you need God. You need Jesus as your Lord. That's the power of the Holy Spirit working in us and through us. He believes, and I do believe this, that you see in this room, and we call him the Doubting Thomas, and he says, as he would miss this episode and all this, he says, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were there in the house again. Thomas was with them. The doors were locked. Jesus came and stood with them. The doors locked, meaning there was still fear. And Jesus stood with them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, because he, Thomas said this in the midst of the disciples, not in the midst of Jesus, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. It's a message to us, folks, to the church. Stop doubting and believe. It's a message to your pastors, your pastors. It's a message to the elders. Stop doubting and believe god's got his plans he's got his purposes he has given us the power of the holy spirit his word meaning the word living among us jesus is his word is true and when we plant that in our heart the holy spirit nurtures it he can do everything we can ask or imagine exceedingly above we pray for god refresh us what are you praying refreshing for just so you can get through the day Folks, we've got eternity set. It's in the meantime in which we live. We're looking for that power to be his instruments of revival, not just to get through the day, but to be an instrument of revival, and we can see the power of God. He says, look, see my hand, see my side, touch. Stop doubting and believe. He's an interactive God. What are you believing for right now? Is it something that you can accomplish? I would say we need to stretch our faith a little bit more. If it's something that you can do without God, you don't got your faith in Him. You got your faith in yourself. You got to believe beyond that. Believe beyond that. It's a greater belief. I challenge you, because I'm challenging myself as a pastor. And I, like I said, I didn't know where we we're going with this today. But I really sense God wants to interact with us. He is 
He is tired of being invited to the banquet and being ignored. Amen. He really is. Because we're afraid of him. Is God ever going to be safe? No. Is he good? Yes. We invite him to the banquet every Sunday, and a lot of times we just ignore him. We invite him to our lives, and we ignore him. He is so tired of that. I'm not doing this step on anybody's toes but my own. He is so tired of that. His heart is broken over the church. He is tired of the new and the shiny things that draw all Christianity together in certain cities around the new and shiny. He said, if I could just get a group of people that would cry out for my purposes and plans, I could change this nation. I could change your families. When brokenness truly sets in to us, his revival wave will pour out. Let's pray together. Father, I, all I know is you desire greater for your children. You desire greater for your church. We invite you to our banquet every Sunday. You invite us to your banquet to feast. And a lot of times, Lord, we really, it doesn't fit our routine or our plans. And it is so hard, Lord. Lord, we dance around, we shout, we sing, we do all those things. Your church here in America, we do all the things that we think we're supposed to do and nothing changes so father we're asking to change us to make us new let us see your hands your side let us experience you fresh again so we may stop doubting and believe and lord that is the power of your holy spirit working in and through us let your refreshing happen in all of our lives let us experience your presence again. Let us experience who you are again. But I'm tired of talking about you. I want us to experience you. We're here locked in our own doubts and fear. Break through with your faith, your love. Let us experience fresh again. I'm going to ask you to stand with me, please. If you're close to someone, I want to grab that person's hand. And I want us to close out as a church in faith and agreement that we can become that we may become that epicenter for revival. That epicenter for revival. Every earthquake has an epicenter where it starts. Do not pray it unless you're willing to embrace the brokenness. God's going to break us. He's going to break us as a nation. I don't know what it's going to take. But let us as a church experience the brokenness together so revival may come and people may ask the question, what is this God that you're serving that is so awesome? Father, as we come in agreement, I ask you, Lord, that we can be that church that walks refreshed by the power of your Holy Spirit, that walks by faith and not by sight. But Lord, you tell us, feel your hands, feel your side. Experience you. Stop doubting and believe. Father, you want to fill every church in America with people, every church. You are concerned for the souls of men and women in this nation. Let us be an epicenter point for that kind of revival. 
And Lord, you said one more time, you would shake everything that could be shaken, starting with your house of worship. Shake us, Lord, to our foundation so that we may know you. Pour out your spirit again on this nation. And Father, I ask you to use us as an epicenter, one of the epicenter. We're not pride, nothing, Lord. But you're going to have many places that's going to be an epicenter for revival. And I pray we can be one of those places that you would find us worthy of that calling. Can we be that place, Father? And there's many, many places you're calling at this point. Let us be one of those places. Let the health of this church be found by faith in Jesus Christ who died for us, who loved us, rose from the dead, and sent his Holy Spirit to empower us. Thank you for this church. I thank you for this flock. I thank you for the hearts and the lives in this church. But Lord, let us not cruise into eternity, but let us run this race with perseverance and purpose. Thank you for that, Father. We bless your name today, Lord. First in the name of Jesus. We're going to sing this song. I'm going to dismiss you, but we're going to be singing. Thank you, Lord. Here's the instructions I give you for this week. When you leave here today, the Lord is going to speak to a bunch of folk. It's not going to be the same, but he's going to give you instruction. If you cried out, Lord, give me a refreshing He's going to give you instructions, and it's going to be simple. It's not going to be complicated. It'll be something simple. Spend this time with me. Do this little thing. Do that little thing. Then as you do that, you'll hear the next and the next and the next. Listen to his voice this afternoon. Just listen. Say, God, what is it that I can be the epicenter for revival for my family, for my workplace? Let me be that, Lord. You're going to shake us one more time. I want to be ready for that shaking. So as we sing this song, you're dismissed. Love on one another as you go from here. God bless you. Jesus, you are, will always be beautiful and lovely to me. You gave your life, shed your blood for me. Heaven came down to reveal your love. Breathe.